And right now we are staying on top of the fallout over a draft Supreme Court opinion regarding the landmark Roe v. Wade case. Thanks so much for joining us at 6 a.m. I'm Eric Conner. And I'm Nettie Irampur. We're glad you're with us here. CBS 8's Chris Grow joining us live in the newsroom right now with the latest developments, including what our state is planning to do today. Chris. Yeah, good morning, Eric and Netta. And in less than three hours, Governor Gavin Newsom will be addressing that leaked draft in Los Angeles. We're going to follow that development for you, including anything that might come from it, any proposals. Now, last night we saw a protest in downtown San Diego where both residents joined local and congressional leaders in, again, this protest against what they believe could be that final decision. I've lived through illegal abortion at times when we had when abortions were illegal and I know what happened to women. I don't want to see it again. And as you can see right there, protests took place in front of the federal courthouse. It's one of many that broke out across the country. All of this happening in the wake of those leaked draft opinion documents from the Supreme Court that would overturn Roe v. Wade. Now that would reverse a women's right on a federal level to choose to have an abortion. Chief Justice John Roberts did confirm that those leaked documents were authentic. However, he stressed it's not the final decision, that that final decision has not been made. Now, an investigation is underway into how those documents were released. Back to local reaction, it wasn't all protests to the draft opinion. In fact, some were encouraged by it, like Pastor Jeremy McGarity, who says a Roe v. Wade reversal would be a win for many Christians. My wife is here today as a result of a gang rape. That gives me a very practical, you know, why we got to protect human life. And there are 26 states that are poised to outlaw abortion or weaken access. Meanwhile, California is one of 16 states proposing laws designed to protect abortion rights. The state legislature is trying to get a constitutional amendment on the state ballot, which would enshrine those abortion rights statewide. If they get a two-thirds majority, it then would go to the voters in November. Eric and Netta. Chris Grove, thank you so much for that. And now we want to show you what happened here. A man is in custody after police say he attacked comedian Dave Chappelle. That's who's on that stage. This was all at the holiday uh, Hollywood Bowl. It happened last night. We've just learned the man was carrying a replica gun. Security rushed to subdue the guy. Dave Chappelle does seem to be OK. And then Chris Rock, who performed earlier in the show, he came on stage after the attack. Take a listen to what he said. Was that Will Smith? Now, of course, I'm not sure if you heard that, but it was a reference to the Oscars when the actor Will Smith slapped Chris Rock. He was saying, was that Will Smith? Right now, it's not clear why the man attacked Dave Chappelle. And now this morning, City Council President Monica Montgomery Stepp will be addressing the uptick in homicides at San Diego Parks. There have been 12 murders in city parks over the past year. Compare that to 2019. There were two homicides in our city parks. Right now, the police union is calling out city leadership to do more to increase police patrols to help combat this trend. Today, a man charged with murder after intervening in a fight on board a bus is expected to make his first court appearance. Police say it all started when a woman was fighting with a man on the bus in the East Village. It was Saturday night when it happened, and police say Edward Hilbert jumped in to help, restraining the man for several minutes. Now, while being restrained, that man lost consciousness, and he later died in the hospital. This morning, we are learning the 79 year old man who was shot while sitting in his car in Pacific Beach yesterday morning has died. We are also learning more about what may have led up to this shooting. We brought the CS breaking news during this hour yesterday. Police say the victim was approached by a man who was likely attempting to steal his car in a parking lot off Marina Boulevard here. Police believe the suspect then opened fire when the victim refused to surrender his car. No arrests have been made yet, and if you have any information, you're asked to call Crime Stoppers. This morning, we are learning that mechanical failure was the cause of that fatal Navy helicopter helicopter crash off the coast of San Diego last August. The chopper crashed into the ocean after it hit the deck of the USS Abraham Lincoln, killing five crew members. The Navy says failing piece of equipment triggered intense vibrations on the helicopter, causing the rotor to hit the deck during the landing.
And a man convicted of shooting and killing a San Diego police officer over 40 years ago could soon be a free man. We are just learning that a judge granted Jesus Cesena's petition last month, challenging Governor Newsom's reversal of the parole. Cesena shot and killed Officer Archie Bugs in the Skyline neighborhood back in 1978. Cesena has been granted parole five times, but has been denied each time. Now, if approved this time, he could be released next month. And now this morning, water safety back in the spotlight, especially along our coast. We know this tends to get polluted. You see signs like this often. The county is unveiling new technology to keep you safe in the waters, especially in the South Bay. CBS 8's Dana Marie McNichol joining us live in Imperial Beach to explain what will be happening there now. Dana Marie. Well, we know this has been an issue for decades when it rains here in San Diego. Hundreds of millions of gallons of sewage and trash and chemicals flow from Tijuana into the Imperial Beach area. But now this brand new technology will test water and give us almost instant results. So the key details here are how fast Imperial Beach will find out if their water quality is poor, is poor and can be dangerous. Now, testing in the past has taken about 24 to 48 hours, but this new technology provides same day public warning of water that could cause illness. The result will be more accurate and posted within hours instead of the next day, reducing the time the public could be at risk if that water is contaminated. Now, beach and water contact closures are becoming the norm here due to unsafe and unclean water as pollution does continue to leak out of Tijuana into this area. Now, around 10 a.m. this morning, city and county leaders will be here revealing this brand new technology. I'm sure they're very excited as this is a very key way to keep people safe as the summer months approach us. I'm Dana Marie McNichol coming to you live from Imperial Beach. All right, Dana Marie, thank you. Uh, beach is a nice place uh, to be here today because yeah. uh, things are going to start warming up out there. You heard We're, the birds yeah. chirping in her yeah. live shot. It's a <laughs> contrast, right, yeah. to the overcast skies that we saw for Monday and Tuesday morning. Now, as we kick off your Wednesday morning, things are looking really nice outside. Clear skies. The sun is already making its way up across the sky, and we finally actually see it this morning as opposed to uh, being socked in with those clouds. So here's the view on satellite radar right now. There are still a few passing clouds overhead, plenty to Developing off the coastline, but for our view here, it is gorgeous, right? T uh, temperatures are going to be warming up to the 70s today. 72 degrees will be three degrees above average. It is finally one of those days where we'll be in the above average range. We'll have widespread 70s and even several 80 degree temperatures as you head farther inland. Low clouds continue clearing throughout the morning, warming throughout the week, and that means that between now and about Friday, we're going to keep that climb going. Likely tomorrow is going to be our peak for most spots on the map, but there there are several that see a match for Friday where we'll stay just as warm going into our Friday afternoon for the weekend. We cool down just slightly. That's Mother's Day weekend and then early next week is when we really start to see a more dramatic cool down wind speeds right now out there. They are calm. That sunset comes at 733. We saw that sunrise nearly 10 minutes ago. Ridge of high pressure to thank for this. That's what's keeping us dry and warm out there. Uh, it's going to continue to stay in place for the next several days, blocking us out from the possibility of this moisture up to the north of us around the Pacific Northwest, but by the end of the weekend, your Mother's Day, really the afternoon into early next week, we'll start to see this low really build. That means wind could be a threat into Sunday. It also presents the opportunity for more cloud cover through Sunday, as well as the chance for maybe even a light drizzle out there. So that's what we see right now. Still pretty far off to know exactly how it'll look right now. Most models give us no chance of any accumulating rain, so no rain totals associated with this rain event. Uh, 609 right now. Let's talk about what we see on the roads. Right Right now, I want to take you to a stalled vehicle that we have. Fast lane is blocked with a stalled vehicle on the 805 northbound as you get onto the 163. Besides that, we're actually doing okay. Drive times are not seeing much trouble. Looks like this is around the time where we'll start to see those speeds slow down. 52 westbound already from the 70 mile per hour range down to 61. So we'll slowly over the next uh, about hour or so start to see some yellow and orange pop up uh, on the screen there, indicating those slightly slower speeds. I'll send things back to you for now.